Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of the first things that I was wondering is... is <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, how you deal with, I guess, <laughs> multidimensionality. And by that, I mean specifically, like, you've got a guitar, you've got a ton of controllers, you've got a computer, you've got pedal. Like, there's a lot of points of diversion that you can then go out. Like, do you view these as... Like, okay, now I'm in this one zone flavor. I'm going to use this aspect of your meta instrument. Or do you view it like all of it is part of the collective instrument and you're just... Like, how do you deal with the, like, that aspect of the instrument, I guess, is... Uh, I guess, I mean, like, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm still a classical guitarist in my kind of mind's eye. Yeah, in yeah. The web. <laughs> and so, so... Um, I'm still thinking about it in that way always. So it's like, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the classical guitar, the nuance of the right hand is like, I, I've done that since I was six. And that's all, my whole life. And so, so thinking about the instrument, um, to answer the question, like thinking about the instrument is just like an extended version of that rather than a hyper meta instrument that now is the, I'm trying not to think about it dictating to me. I'm trying yeah, to, yeah. it's the same aesthetic line. So whatever the control is that I'm going for, <coughs> it's trying to really respond to you and find the space and what, the, what are we making or, you yeah. know, somehow. And so, so one of the things that I found tricky since working on extending the instrument in this way is, is knowing that, no, knowing, knowing at what point I'm able to do that, you know, so if you add a control to it or a thing in Ableton that you're now going to access, there's a point of transition for me from that being a fun thing that's nice or maybe applies to one composition and gradually migrating its way hmm. into this aesthetic where it's like, okay, now it's, so then it becomes static. So like the, the, this kind of, the stuff that's in here, I, I feel comfortable with, you know. So there's obviously that desire for newness. You're always like, newness, <laughs> newness, newness. It's like, yeah. it's the mantra, you know. But, but at the same time, newness, uh, I'm trying not to be at the expense of that. Yeah, yeah. So it's just an extended color palette, you know. Yeah, and I, I totally, uh, like, not agree, but I, that resonates with some of how I think about things because it's, and the reason I mentioned it is because this has such a, a, a many points of departure possible from the instrument, you yeah. know, that like, you know, how you conceptualize that more than anything else. Like how you do it in practice is a different thing, but like how you envision it. And I, I like that idea of having it be the, it's the, I guess, the, the fretboard, the strings first in a certain extent, and then the things kind of grow or outgrowths of that. Yeah, and I mean like, I mean, I, I know guitarists, you know, tabletop guitarists, or, you know, even I mean, like, you know, I mean, there's so many amazing guitar players, but like, you know, even someone who I really admire, like Fred Frith, you know, who, or, or Derek Bailey, that's, you know, having looked at that, that wall, it's like the guitar then becomes incidentary in a way to mm. the, uh, you know, uh, to, by detuning it and making noise with it and treating it as a tabletop instrument at points, you get away from it being a guitar. And I'm, I'm still like, 
kind of think I'm, you know, 47. I'm still trying to learn how to play the thing. Yeah. So <laughs> when I, maybe when I get to a point where I go, I, I can just detune it and put it on the yeah, table, yeah. then I'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> but I don't think I'm there yet. So, yeah, yeah. so I, still, I, still, I still love it, you know, and I'll still pick up the acoustic guitar and uh, sit down and, I don't know, play a classical piece or play it, sit down and spend an hour on a jazz standard and just play. That's still enticing to me at the same mm. time, you know. So it's not like... I, I guess in this world, sometimes you see a lot of us practitioners, we will come from that world and then we get to maybe some, a world like this and then we just chuck out everything. We've, no more tonal stuff, yeah. and no more chords <laughs> and no more lines and no more, good, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know it's, it's a tricky, it's, there's lots of pressures and it's tricky to balance it. Mm. You know? I mean, I guess a tangent of that makes me think like, I, I guess your relationship to pitch is still quite important. Like pitch and harmony and chords like are still part of the, the core musical thinking, even though you've got all this, I mean, a lot of what I, I heard now was still, pitch was probably one of the central parameters, right? Like there's a lot of timbre and color and effect, but there were lines, as you, as you said, like there was melodic material that was there as like one of the, the foregrounded things. Even when you were doing like these kind of low glissy things, it was in the context of pitch, you know, is that like a, a, a correct estimation or, or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm still fascinated by it, you know, like, uh, it's, uh, you, you know, earlier I played something and somebody remarked, oh, that's like an ECM thing or whatever. This is, it's, but that was what play, was played there and th those pictures and that gesture then suggest mm. something. And I guess there's this, such a memory of so many things for us as musicians, you know, and um, there's still a beauty in pitch that, you know, I, um, I mean, I, you know, 10 years ago, I was trying to actively abandon it, <laughs> you know, like get away from it and just make sound. And, yeah. then, and then maybe... Maybe it's somewhere in between now, but, but yeah, there's, there's certain pitches and sounds and, and certain things. I mean, you played something, there was just something, one of your gestures, and I, I then played some bass line thing, and then the bass line that just happened in response to that kind of went, oh, that's kind of like, it's quite groovy. Yeah, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do that again, because that was, that was, <laughs> just hang around there for a yeah, little bit, yeah. and, you know. I mean, and that, they, I guess then that begs the question, like, how long do you hang around there, mm. or how do you move away, you know? Arts. Yeah, I mean that that, that one's an, an interesting one because for me, like my background in like I came from a lot of pitch pitch forward instruments like piano and guitar, right. and then quite consciously moved away from that. I mean, there's still pitches that come out of things that are happening, but it's not like a vector of what I think about as being important. They're right. they're they're incidental that, that they happen, right. and like if there's clusters of pitches, they you know it's hard to avoid them having meaning, but I, it's not something that I'm thinking about like oh let me build this specific thing. harmonic thing. Um, but yeah, on, onto the thing that you kind of mentioned there, I guess this is a context where we've never played before, yeah. but also are <laughs> largely unfamiliar with each other's music, you yeah. know, like, like just kind of only recently met. So yeah. it's, it's like there's um, a conversational uh, exposition that happens musically when we started playing, Yeah, which I've, I've done a lot of playing over the years with people I've never played before, like either at Jam Night or things like this. So I've, I've kind of gotten used to like, negotiating exposition to a certain extent but i guess like how do you how do you view that exposition like like you say okay there's this language here do we do we do you uh, we went with it but then like yeah do you go back to it how much do you stay like how do you negotiate that musical exposition well um, i mean I, I i guess listening is you know to state the obvious obviously. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, first first of all listen <laughs> which all to happen you know, that doesn't happen yeah, always, yeah. you know. Um, listen, uh, the way, I mean, my, my approach to uh, working in an improvisational context, it, um, my preferred uh, context would be like to really get to know you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, and, then, and then my objective would be to try and, I mean, maybe it sounds contrite in a way, but I like doing that is try and play something that I know Hey, you, you, you know, here, here's something nice that I know you're gonna like, yeah, and, yeah. It, and that's you know starts the party well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in a you know in, in in a concept like this, I mean, the first question is someone has to start. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, you can wait, <laughs> or or you can like like it felt like there suddenly there was a breath and then something happened, you know. Mm. And then it's almost kind of go seek, you know, mm. see what you know, see what you can find and. Yeah, yeah. And share. 
And then obviously there's, you know, we're going to play again. Yeah. Now there's all the pressure of that one. <laughs> you, your memory of that one is sticking yeah, around. Yeah. Oh, that worked and that worked. Now, you know, now you got to, do you play that again? Do you mm. not? Do you try for something new? Is that also contrived or yeah. oh, it's complicated. Yeah, I mean, there becomes like a meta thing, which I, is one of my favorite parts of, of these, uh, the Play Talk Plays in general is the second play because <laughs> they're, they're post uh, reflection, <laughs> um, but pre a second reflection. There's always like a, another talk after, you're like, oh, we're packing down, but like they're, they're not part of the thing, but it's, it's an interesting in-between moment, even though it's the ending of the video. Um, but yeah, there, there's something about the negotiation of that interplay that evolves and gets to know, like I don't play chess. Well, I mean, I know how, I understand how it plays, but I don't play chess. But I imagine part of chess is sussing out, like, oh, okay, you're this, you're doing this kind of thing, yeah. like getting to know the where someone's coming from from the behavior, yeah, and then then playing the game, you know, if that sort of makes sense. So like getting to know like how each of us are responding to changes in materials and prompts, and then negotiating the language and the sort of the conversational aspect of how that inner like uh, emerges, you know, that, yeah. that is that is one of my favorite parts of like that, like oh hello hello oh, hi hi oh how are you so shall we do that? oh I'll do that. no you do, do that oh, okay I'll do it like there's this that happens <laughs> but just musically and we we vibe it and then we we kind of click in or or not or whatever but that's part of that expositiony thing you know yeah and I mean you know there's you know, like you say the first and second play you know in this case but. You know, for instance, if you were if we, if we were touring, yeah. hypothetically, you know, there's you get on the tour and you got ten dates. Yeah, you, you already know like date seven, date yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's going to be good. <laughs> and you know, because there's there's like the conversation grows and there's knowledge, and then and then you forget about each other somewhere on the tour, and you're just mm. you're just responding to the music, mm. and that's when it gets really really beautiful. Yeah, you know, and then there's obviously the, if you have a really great eighth gig, <laughs> there's always that impact of that on the ninth gig. You know, yeah, so, yeah. so you know, th there's all these dynamics. This is a fresh conversation, so it has amazing, you know, beauty in it mm. by being brand new. Um, and then there's the next conversation in this case, which will be whatever it is. Mm. But if you're on a tour, then the, the tenth conversation. Yeah. Is, it, so it evolves. You know, and I've, I've worked with one or two musicians for a number of decades. Right. You know, and, and a drummer who I'm good friends with. Um, the most well the coolest part about that relationship is he'll be behind me and i i hear something and i ah okay <laughs> and we just play the same thing or yeah, we arrive yeah. at the same line we just kind of say oh that's that story the, the gestures mm. there and then and that's really beautiful mm. you know when you're locked in in you know kind of kindness and respect and gentleness and but at the same time i, I know you it's, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's, it's magical it's yeah, magic. yeah 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 and, and that, I mean, sorry, just to end that, that type of relationship in that case can transcend genre boundaries. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so he and I have worked on funk projects and we've worked on country projects and, and we've worked in free improvisation, but it's, it's something else other than the music, you know, yeah, yeah. which is really cool. I mean, there's definitely like a, like a good, like improvising with people that you've improvised with a lot or playing music with people you've played music with yeah. a lot. I think there's a like things beyond the now that that resonate within that. Yeah. Both heard and unheard. Yeah. So like it could be like a reference towards a thing, but the thing itself didn't happen, but it, it's enough to trigger the memory or response or communication. Yeah. Or even just like, like with people that know each other, well, like a little nod can carry a lot of meaning, even though like the nod itself didn't really mean much, but like I nodded in that way that I did that one time where we, you know, did X, Y, or Z or something like, yeah. so there's, there's a communication beyond the, audible communication and then obviously the superficial like I will make these sounds which mean a certain thing in in like a kind of a superficial not meaningless but superficial as in like visible or uh, like perceivable and, and how know? do you how do you then think about you, you know that the challenges of that say in solo improvisation as versus because that's a that's a different yeah, yeah. paradigm you know yeah absolutely I mean for me a, a lot of the performance that I do tends to be solo stuff like concert stuff tends to be solo improvisation and I think for me, there's a lot of, I guess, exposition is different in that I'm not needing to learn about somebody or something. But there is there is uh, nevertheless exposition with room and context and instrument, like they're like the typical performance expression things. But I, I like the idea of 
finding and transforming some idea in, in, a, in a way that I find interesting at the moment. Right. You know, so it might, I might sit down and be like, okay, like this is, oh, this is kind of something and then go with that and then explore that in however I might, it might be. It's rarely to exhaustion. I, I don't tend to aesthetically like things where it's like, okay, I've got this thing. What's every sound I can make with this thing? I find <laughs> that kind of banal. But I do like the idea of having some idea that then gets manipulated in some way in a way that with a duo or trio or whatever in a different context, there is additional new input that isn't yourself. Yeah. I mean, here there's a computer and that can sometimes function that way, but uh, ultimately it's different in that you will do things I will have not thought of yeah. just by definition because you're a different person. person yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that that's kind of different with it. In, in the conversation as you were talking there, I was trying to think of like if I have a preference in terms of playing with someone I've never played with before or someone I've played with a lot. Um, I don't know if I have a strong preference other than like perhaps improvising with someone who I've not improvised before who isn't themselves uh, like let's say a really good improviser that can negotiate like stuff. You know, like so I, I, that would probably not be my preference, but in, in general, I, I think playing with people that I've played with a long time and also playing with people I've played with a bit or playing with people I've never played with before who are, are apt improvisers, I find um, as long as I guess the meta communication of decision making still happens, yeah, I find that probably equally enjoyable because I like those like, okay, we're doing that thing, we're in a thing now. Are we going to cape on the thing? Are you going to change? Like the thinking about and realizing the decisions that I make and you make in yeah. that is what I find enjoyable. And that could be um, cool for someone who have never played before or with someone that I've had played before, I might think how they'll respond. But the, the negotiation of that stuff I find to be some of the engaging stuff for me, which then can sound cool on top of that. Yeah. But the, realizing like, Yes, no, no, yes, 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 no, yes, no, yes. Like those things I find super like um, engaging and uh, fulfilling as like the, one of my core things of what I like about improvisation and doing it as a practice is negotiating that. Yeah. You know? I think it ends up sounding cool on top of that, but I think it's the, 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 the negotiation of interpersonal dynamics through non-language, I guess. Yeah. I guess that isn't super important that it's non-language, but uh, negotiating it in that way, where like, I don't know what you're gonna do, but then you do something, I'm like, okay, now I know what you did. <laughs> and then the same thing, like, you know, we're communicating in this way. Um, so yeah, how that relates to people I play with a lot or little, it, it, I, don't, I don't know that I would say that 100% I always wanna play with the person that I've played with for 20 years or whatever. Yeah, um, and, it, and it can be, it can be as, as beautiful as someone sharing a line and finishing a line yeah, out of the yeah. blue, as beautiful as that can be, it can also be a box in the sense that yeah. you're not moving out of that box at all. And sometimes playing with someone, you know, uh, and especially in the context of free improvisation, but, you know, playing with someone you haven't played with before brings new material into your world. And you're like, oh, I'd never have, mm. I'd never have thought of that sound. I'd never yeah, have thought yeah. of that gesture or that idea, you know, which you, which you wouldn't get. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's twos and fro's on both sides, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, and even thinking about like in a zoomed out like meta way, like part of what I've chosen to do with my creative life now is do a, a series of videos with people I've, I mean, not always not played before, but like different people. Right. You right. Know, I'm not doing this every month with the same person, you know what I mean? Right. Like I've made a decision consciously or unconsciously to do that where it's like it's different every time. Right. So that's, I value it enough to do, have done that. Right. Which is kind of interesting sort of meta reflecting on the... Yeah, and you, you, were, you were saying you came from a rock background. Um, um, I was going to say, like, one of, the, one of the things that I struggled with, for instance, in jazz is, is often, I mean, maybe in different levels, it's, on different levels it's different, but often there's this adversarial relationship to the improvisational mm. experience in jazz, which I, in the end, wasn't in, I wasn't enjoying. I, you know, I found it not so much enriching, you know. Like competitive, you mean? Yeah, kind of like yeah. you know, like um, like a like a sport almost. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. It's like, and, <laughs> and it's like it was it's hard. Where it was the, in free improvisation, the, all the things we've spoken about now are kind of reliant on me looking at you orally, you know, yeah. and respecting. Oh, okay, I'm mean, coming to the table with respect hmm. for the situation, and and I find sometimes you know even even in free jazz, you know, it's it's really hard to be free. Yeah, yeah. you know, because there's this kind of the rules of the game are very rigid, you know. Indeed. And yeah. there's achievers and non-achievers in the in the hierarchy, you mm. know. Whereas this, you know, this type of thing, it really it opens the playing field to to accepting 
pitch-based material and mm. non-pitch-based material mm. in, in interesting ways, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's quite beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, shall we play some more? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.